Arsenal 4, Leicester City 2, an absolute smashing in reality. Gabriel Jesus on absolute fire. Martinelli taking 20, 30, maybe even 40 million pound off the asking price of Wesley Fofana. Arsenal Football Club showing everybody why I predicted them, predicted them to come third in the league this year. An outstanding, energetic, emphatic performance from the Gunners. They are the real deal. Welcome back to the Football Terrace, the best place to get your match reaction. Gabriel Jesus, Martinelli on absolute fire today up front for Arsenal Football Club. Four goals to two up against Leicester City. And it was sensational. Let's just have it right. It was sensational. Yes, they conceded two goals. I'll get this out of the way very quickly. An unlucky header from William Saliba that, that gave Leicester an in. And a well-worked goal, well taken by Madison to make it 3-2. But the mental strength demonstrated by Arsenal to bounce back instantly, to hit back instantly, is the difference between the also-runs and the elites. The footballing element of, of Arsenal has improved because the confidence and the mentality is there. As explained on the football terrace multiple times over the past few years, your mentality, your approach mentally is very, very key. Very, very key indeed. I don't think you can get away from how important, how important this, this that element of the game is. It's absolutely imperative. It really, really is that those parts of the game are are, are looked at and focused on and in, in in the right ways. In the right ways. And Arsenal Football Club looked absolutely fantastic today. They really, really did look fantastic. In every single which way. And I don't think Arsenal fans can be anything but happy, anything but over the moon. Whether you're an Arteta inner, an Arteta outer, whether you're someone that thought that Arsenal could get to this level or not, that's on you. As I stated in my predictions a few weeks ago, I believe this Arsenal team are going to go to another level. I don't even think they've reached that other level yet. And they look brilliant. Yes, they conceded some goals today. Yeah, oh, people like that. That's it. That shows they've, they've got weaknesses. Saliba's going to get better and better throughout the course of this season. And Leicester will score goals against most teams. They've got very good attacking players. Don't let that distract you. This was a strong, dominant, emphatic performance. Now, let's talk Gabriel Jesus for a minute. Because talking Gabriel Jesus is going to be very, very key indeed. Very, very key indeed. Gabriel Jesus is another one of these players that's making eye test merchants go very, very quiet on socials. Very quiet. Where are the eye test merchants? I can't see them. I don't know where they are. I don't know what they're up to. I don't know what they're doing. I really don't know what the eye test merchants are up to at this moment in time. And the reason that I, the reason that I say this is because from, from my point of view, I look at it very much from the line of this guy was kind of laughed at a little bit as an Arsenal target. Oh, he isn't that good. Pep doesn't want him. He's a tap-in merchant. He doesn't have any tech. He didn't pass the eye test. Gabriel Jesus is not a good player based on these, basically, Twitter-created football theories. And as we know, the Tacticos don't know shit about football. They never have, they never will. The eye test merchants, they just know what, th they know what looks good, but they don't know real ball. Gabriel Jesus, everyone that understood football said, what a signing he could be. And he demonstrated his press, his hold-up play, his interchange in the first game. today. We saw a completely different side. We saw the goal threat. The second goal was a bit of a poacher's goal. Followed it through. Anticipated there could be a flick on. The ball could end up at that back post. But the first goal, the play from Arsenal was brilliant to work the ball into the box. Granite Xhaka with his runs into the middle, out of this world. And then on top of that, the finish from Jesus. The, 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 I don't know if it was a chip or a pass into the into the into the top corner that's how good it was and i'm not prepared to review it and 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 break it down in intricate detail because i don't care that much it was just sensational that's all you've got to say about it sensational goal in every single which way imaginable it was a sensational goal he demonstrated that today in abundance what a signing what an absolute star signing he is going to be for arsenal football club and at 40 odd 45 odd million pounds it's one of the it's one of the deals 
of this of, of, of not just this year. It's going to be one of the deals in the next four or five years. He is going to be out of this world. And listen, City won today. They won four nil. They've got Haaland. They've got Alvarez. They're not going to regret losing him. But I'm telling you now, the, the Tottenham's, the Chelsea's. Look at Man United, the striker. They're all going to regret not going in big for this guy because he is going to score goals, 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 goals. Um, step aside, lack of threat. Step aside, Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang. This man is the real deal in an Arsenal shirt. Super Chat here says, I can't believe uh, Chelsea missed the boat signing Jesus. He's world class. We need help up front badly. That's from a Chelsea fan, by the way, that reads. Um, when the pressure is on Arsenal, will fail as usual. It's a fair point. However, the beginning of the season, Arsenal starts slowly. That's when the pressure's on. Arsenal have a habit of ending the seasons well, everybody getting excited, and when the pressure's on at the beginning of the campaign, they fall away. Yes, they conceded two goals the game, but it's, was it six goals? Six goals in their opening two games, six points. Compare that to last year. They're on zero points. Minus goal difference by now. The start it, 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 it is out of this world. And look, Spurs are going to be great this year. Chelsea will be very, very good this year. Arsenal, let's just take City and Liverpool out of it. Arsenal will be the team to beat in relation to the top four race. They are going to lead it. They are out of this world. And it pains me to say it. People are calling me an Arsenal fan in the comment sections. Whatever. I don't really care if you call me an Arsenal fan. Just being honest doesn't make me an Arsenal fan. Uh, can we have a moment for KDB scoring from the outside of the boot and an assist? Might be City's greatest ever player. A hot take might break the assist record. What, Ryan Giggs' assist record? Um, I know at the moment we can't speak on Ryan Giggs because of what's going on, but that's going to be a hard thing for him to break. But we know how good KDB is. KDB is out of this world and he's in a brilliant team and system and that out of the edge pass or shot or goal, that guy does that in his sleep. It's uh, unbelievable how good he is. And we are taking calls from City fans this afternoon as well. Um, but let's not disrespect David Silva, Sergio Aguero, Raheem Sterling, uh, these legends for me. Uh, Vincent Company still ahead of him right now. But look, I'm not a City fan. So City, listen, I, one thing I would say about legends of, of clubs, only fans from that club can really pick their legends. I don't think a, a Man United fan or an Arsenal fan or a Chelsea fan should be picking City legends. Of life. People try and tell me. I remember a Guna saying to me, oh, Ollie's not a Man United legend. I'm like, you can't. That's something you don't get an opinion on. Do you know what I mean? It's like one of you telling me who my favourite child is. I decide who my favourite child is, not you. Hi, Freya. <laughs> Hope you will, baby. <laughs> That's a joke. If any of my kids are watching, you shouldn't be. You should be outside playing. It's beautiful. I don't have any favourites, really. Really. I don't. Um, but there we go. We're going to go to your calls very soon, though, people. We are live until the Man United game kicks off. We're live later on tonight as well. But I want those like buttons smashed. I'm very, very generous today. If we hit 1,250 likes while we're live, I'm going to give away 100 free memberships. 100 free memberships if we hit 1,250 likes. There you go, people. You know what to do. Smash that. There's 3,000 3, of you watching. We should hit that in less than a second. <laughs> it's easy. Um... Another super chat's just come in here from my guy, Aaron, that says, predicted a comfortable win, to be honest. My mind um, isn't changed yet. I think they still come fifth. Time will tell if they play like this against the top six, is what Aaron says. Uh, Jesus was so hungry and wanted that hat trick. And he did, and he almost got it. That touch, that turn. And he, he, tried, he, he tried to pull it onto his left foot for the perfect hat trick. If you don't know what a perfect hat trick is, it's when you score one with your left, one with your right, one with your head. Uh, that's Ed with a capital E. Um, and you did it. What an own debut that would have been uh, for the Majestic Maestro. That would have been out of this world. I want to say a big thank you, by the way, to uh, Nadim. <laughs> Nahim, sorry, Nahim. For becoming an official member. Right, I'm going to the phones now. I'm going to the lines. I want to know what people are thinking and feeling. First up on the show, Jess is here with me. Congratulations. Hey, <laughs> Yeah, that was a really exciting game. Can you hear me? Okay. Perfect. Okay. Yeah, that was a really exciting game. And um, I thought we saw the best of Arsenal under Arteta probably today. Um, we've never played that good, like in attack under Arteta ever. And so, you know, I think a lot of Arsenal fans are waiting to see 
a free flowing fluid arsenal that scores quite a bit of goals. And we did that today. Gabriel Jesus was definitely, you know, the, the difference maker there in terms of like the aggression and the emphasis and attention in the final third. And Gabriel Martinelli followed right behind him and was like, they were like the perfect little Batman and Robin up there. I mean, I thought that they were so, so good. And I know it's a good Arsenal day when we win a game, we're all excited about what we saw. And there were some clear under par performances in that in that team. And that's what most good teams have. They have maybe six or seven players playing really, really good. And then you have maybe three or so, you know, out there that you can see that aren't up to the same level, but you can carry those those average performances. So I think you know, we, we did a really good job today. Um, I thought, you know, the commentators on my side on the stream that I was watching were trying to make that game out to seem like it was even. It wasn't. Arsenal were playing a much better brand of football than Leicester. We gave them one opportunity, you know, or we gave them one goal and then they had one good opportunity. But ultimately, I thought we were so dominant and so fluid. And I also like that the depth on the bench is getting a lot better. In the last game I saw you know, a lot of people kind of commenting on the bench. And I think it's because maybe they don't actually understand what's going on at Arsenal. We had players that were out with injury. Now we had Tomiyasu on the bench, Tierney on the bench, and ESR as well. And Ketty has been playing really well too. So, you know, seeing Arteta use those subs and then there was no drop off whatsoever, I do think gives us some um, some enthusiasm, something to to be like, okay, that's something different from last season because we know – when subs came in last season, we really dropped off. And so, yeah, and I just have to say with William Saliba, like for somebody that, you know, obviously scored an own goal, which was like, you know, we knew he was going to make a mistake. He still came out looking really, really good. If you look at the difference between the performance from Fofana and the performance from Saliba, you can say that even though Saliba scored an own goal, he was so good. He was relatively flawless except for that. So I, I couldn't be happier with the individual performances and the team performance. I do think people underestimate the, the mental stability of this team because like, had we had gone to two, one, you know, last season, we might've drawn that game or lost it. And we came right back and attacked them again. And so this was probably the best attacking performance of Arsenal under Mikel Arteta. And so, yeah, um, I have nothing to really complain about. I'll, I'm sure I'll find something later, but. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I've watched your videos. You sometimes do like to complain for no, absolutely no reason. No, I'm joking. You're just being constructive. And I think you're right to be positive. And the goals being conceded, listen, this early in the season, it's the acid test. How did you bounce back? What was the mental strength like? And you went straight out, solidified, scored, shut them down. And you didn't allow them to creep back into the game. Two years ago, you, you throw that game away, in my opinion. You, you concede that own goal cracks would have appeared and you'd have thrown that game away. You'd have drawn, but, but most probably lost to a team like Leicester two seasons ago. You're now in a situation where you're winning those games and coming back. So yeah, very emphatic in the end. Uh, Jess, really appreciate talking to you um, and we'll chat again soon. All right. All right. Bye. Take care. Bye. Bye. We're going to go to more calls, people. We want to get more of you on. Igal to come, Gunnar Sol to come, Patrick, the City fan. We are talking City on the show as well today. Brandon as well, but Gunnar Express is here. What are you saying, Gunnar Express? Yeah, it was good, Terry. I'm happy, man. 4-2. Uh, as you said, any other season, we'd have probably lost our draw that game. Um, just watching all or nothing, you know, re-watching that Everton game where we're winning 1-0 and then we lose 2-1 in the last minute. That kind of thing would have happened again today. But the team's obviously different. There's something else in this team uh, that's making us a lot better. And for me, it's the addition of Gabriel Jesus because you look at Lacazette, yeah, he doesn't score either of those two goals that Jesus got today. He doesn't offer anything that Jesus offered today. I mean, Jesus got both of the assists as well. So him being added to this team could be one of the best signings this transfer window in general because of the impact that he's going to make for us. Um, as well with Saliba, I don't care about the own goal. He had to put, he, he had to do something. If he didn't, Vardy's in one-on-one -on -one with Ramsdale. He probably scores because it's, it's Jamie Vardy. So I'm not bothered about the own goal. Saliba's performance overall was brilliant yet again. Um, and the centre-back that we should be looking at is Wesley Fofana because he was being destroyed everywhere on the pitch by Martinelli. The guy, he, he got a yellow card because Martinelli was just ripping him apart. And, he, you know, I mean, it, it, it was an embarrassing performance from Fofana. And to be honest, he'll fit right in at Chelsea because now he's conceded four goals to Arsenal. Chelsea like doing that as well. So he's going to fit right in there. So 
for me, I'm just happy with the performance. The way that we scored both of the goals as well, like straight after they got their goals, it was from kickoff straight away. Like it, I didn't expect it at all. Like I'm, this, this isn't Arsenal. This is like watching a different team. This, this isn't Arsenal that I know of the last three, four, five years. So whatever Arteta is doing, whatever the coaching staff's doing, whatever Edu, whatever, whatever like. There's no point of criticising these guys right now because they're doing their jobs. They're getting the players. The players are playing well. And the best thing is there's still more to come. We still want a centre midfielder. We still want a winger. And we're already playing like this without those two areas. So I said third. I predicted third as well. And I definitely think with the way that we're playing right now, I get it's only two games, but you can only look at what you've seen. You can only beat what's in front of you. I don't know why we can't get third. We can definitely get top four. We should get top four with the players that we have. Uh, and yeah, I'm excited for the season. Um, and I'm also excited to see, uh, hopefully, Chelsea lose to Spurs because I hate Chelsea more than Spurs right now, which is something that I shouldn't be saying. But yeah, that, that's, that's how I'm feeling right now, man. It, it's, good, it's good to hear you happy with your team. I know a lot of Gooners have had, have had problems over the last few years in terms of getting behind this team. It's good to hear that Gooner Express and good to have you back on the terrace, my friend. We'll speak soon. Big up, man. Thank you very much. Top, top man. Thank you very much indeed. Some super chats here. First one said, great game from Arsenal. If Frankie De Jong joins Man United, I will trace a big L to your face. Your friend Ben should find another job. Uh, listen, very quickly, I've said that I think if Chelsea make the bid and the bid gets accepted, he picks Chelsea. If Man United pull it off, there's no L for me. I'm happy and I'm celebrating. You can come for me all you want the bill, but you'll be you'll be talking to a brick wall. Uh, Jesus was so hungry and wanted that hat trick. Um, we, we had that one there. Sorry, uh, Terry, uh, why are you twerking so hard for Arsenal? Please explain. Are you way too excited? Surely this is sarcasm. You are cheering Arsenal goals. Well, I'm not cheering their goals when they go in when I'm here. I built a platform. The first person to build a platform on, on, on social media, which caters for more than one team. Everybody else has followed since. And it's beautiful, a beautiful thing to see so many great channels now doing similar to what we do at the Terrace. To build a platform like this, you can't be biased towards clubs. You need to be honest and open about how you feel at said times. It's not about twerking for Arsenal. I'm not an Arsenal fan. I don't want Arsenal to succeed. But when I see a team playing well, playing brilliantly, playing with freedom, I'm going to say it. I'm honest. It's as simple as that. Not bias. I'm honest. And if Arsenal start choking, I'll say they're choking. That, that, that's the long and the short of it. And then all the gooners that are suddenly watching me going, oh my God, he's great. We'll start saying I'm biased. It's not my fault. People have weaknesses. Uh, Arsenal will struggle against top teams still. That's a fair point. We'll have to wait and see, my friend. Uh, Josh King, my brother, uh, says, Woolwich look great, to be honest. Uh, to do, But do we expect anything less against a poor Leicester and a Palace team with no preseason? Great performance, but a lot to prove is what Spurs fan Josh thinks here. Uh, KDB will break the record for the most assists in a, oh, in a Premier League season. Arsenal played well, but I am still not convinced they are a good 11, but no midfield depth is what Zane says. John C says, I like the top teams don't concede. It's like the top teams don't concede, but when Arsenal concede, we're not um, up to it, is what jo Josie's got to say. Uh, people keep saying Zinchenko can't play midfield in the Premier League. The guy was amazing playing inverted today. You could easily step into the eight role, uh, is what's stated there. And Fafana clapping to the fans for the last time. Look, Fafana's going to go. It's going to happen. I think that's part of the reason he had a bad game today. Martinelli was great. But Fafana's head's elsewhere. He shouldn't even be on that football pitch. But we know Brendan Rodgers, absolute bang average football manager. Bang average football manager. So, well, you know, why is anybody um, surprised to see his team do something like that? It's crazy. Bang average. Uh, we've still got Brandon to come. We've got Patrick to come. Souls to come. Vator. Vet, Vet, I get his name wrong all the time. Vator. Vator. Vator Games. You know, the City fan from Canada. Him. That guy. Uh, but first, Egal is in the house. What you saying, my brother? We used to have it all. Now's our curtain call. Oh, man, bro. I, Gabriel Jesus stole the show. That was my point, man. That guy, he's absolutely amazing. I, I'm besides myself, bro. Literally beside myself. Man came in, got two goals, two assists, and he could have had more. He could have got a hat trick. He he could have got he could have got involved in more goals. And I honestly thought at one point we we're gonna win this game five 0 That was my prediction at the beginning of the, the, this week. I thought this Leicester team were vulnerable, there for the taking, and we did what we had to do. We we they came to our house, and we're gonna try to make the Emirates a fortress this year. 
teams are going to come to the Emirates and they're going to struggle because it's going to be, we're going to have, our, we're going to have our fans there. We're going to be trying to impose our game on them. We're going to try to hold onto possession and we're going to try to dominate the game. And that's what we tried to do majority of this game. We did concede a sloppy goal, but the best part about today's performance was every time we conceded a goal, we had an answer and we bounced back. We bounce back. William Saliba gets that own goal. Immediately, what do we do? We bounce back and get a goal. And it was nice to see Granit Xhaka getting forward. Nice to see Granit Xhaka playing a little bit of a different game. He was getting a little bit more forward, showing what he can do, showing he can he can do uh, he can be a little bit different in his in his play style. And I kind of liked it today. He got in the goal sheet. He was very involved. He was even at one point. It seemed like he was playing in the, in the number nine position. He was getting slotted through with through balls. And the mo- the most the most important thing is. The, not only Gabriel Jesus is a game changer, Gabriel Martinelli seems like he might be taking another step in his progression. And that's what we need to see. In order for us to progress, we need Gabriel Martinelli to improve. We need Saka to stay at the same level he was at last year or maybe show some level of improvement. We need more from Odegaard because in the first two games, he hasn't shown enough. But I still feel like he has another level to reach. And, and even without Saka and Odegaard having the greatest games, we're still winning this game comfortably, in my opinion. And then the final thing is, if, if Ramsdale can improve on, on those situations with the Madison goal, we will keep more clean sheets this season and we'll definitely be a lot better. I felt like this game, there was, some, there was a lot of positives, way more positives than negatives, but there's still some things that we can analyze and say that we need to improve on. I'm not going to get excited and go crazy, but Gabriel Jesus, guys, he is not playing around. He's going to be respected as one of the top players in this league in, in, a, in a year or two. I think he's already respected it, to, to that degree, though. I, I, I wouldn't say in a year or two. I think he already is by football fans. No, I'm saying like one of the faces of the leagues. Like Alexis Sanchez is one of the faces of the leagues. He's going to be one of those guys. I really oh. believe he has the ability and and the, and the ability to, uh, with the technical ability, the uh, the fact that he's a Brazilian international and he's playing at a top club like Arsenal, you could be seeing him as one of the faces uh, of the league in a couple of years' time if he can if he continues to improve. And I've told you guys this. I believe Gabriel Jesus has the ability to do what Alexis Sanchez did making that move and going to a bigger club and coming in and showing that he has that ability to improve and get to that next level just like how Alexis came from Barcelona a Pep team at the time if I'm not mistaken I I, I don't remember exactly if Pep was there or not but he he came from Barcelona came to Arsenal raised his game to another level I think Gabriel Jesus could emulate a similar thing where he's coming from a team where they had so much quality around him, where he wasn't really asked to do as much, where he's coming now to a team where he's the main man. He's going to be encouraged to do uh, great things. And he's gonna be, we're going to push him for it. And his hunger and his desire is something we've missed. He, he, he wanted that hat trick. He wants to score those goals. He wants it. And that's what I need. Character analysis at Arsenal for the players that we've been bringing in lately is fantastic. And that's, what, that's what's changed over the, in our recruitment, I think. Yeah, I understand. I mean, when you look at Gabriel Jesus, do you see him as, the signing of the summer? I think Gabriel Jesus was the signing of the summer because of his price tag and his ability from, from time. Obviously, you're going to say Holland, but Holland's expectations are always going to be high. I think Gabriel Jesus is going to smash his expectations in the sense of what people expected from him. I think people expected him to get what? Maybe like what? Close, uh, just just uh, near 15 goals in the league. I think he'll he'll do he'll 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 get past that easily. I think he'll get past 20 plus all all competitions. And it's only his first two goals in an Arsenal shirt. And you can see how he's performing and how everything. It's just a level up from what we had last year. Lacazette only scored two goals in open play last year, non penalty goals. Gabriel Jesus has already e- equaled that in in his second game. It's crazy. Yeah, no, listen, I mean, he, he has. And I think that you, you compare him to the way your previous strikers were performing and he's on a he's on a different level to them so far. There's, there's almost no doubt about that whatsoever. A long way to go, though, as you've mentioned, that I still think Arsenal have got levels to get to, which is why I pred- predicted them as things stand to come third. We'll see what Chelsea do in the transfer window in the last couple of weeks and, and everything else. But um, I started seeing tweets from people that have been calling me crazy, going, oh, actually, maybe Arsenal are, are pretty good. I'm like, yeah, yeah, where's the homage over here, my guy? But um, we'll see what happens. Igal, always a pleasure to speak. I'm sure we'll catch up early part of next week on the Top 6 show. Igal, take care. Goodbye. God bless. Speak to you soon, my friend. Thank you. Remember, we are going to do a feature-length show after the Man United-Brentford game. We're not like all the other fan channels that cover one team. We have to kind of like fluctuate between many. Um, I've got some super chats here. First one says, oh, my God, at least be a man and stick to your opinion. What are you talking about, Nabil? I have said that I think if Chelsea and Man United both go in for the player, both of their bids accepted, I think you'll pick Chelsea. If Man United get him, why would I take an L? 
it's, it's not something I'm, I'm going to care about, my bro. You can come for me. And if it makes your penis feel bigger, then that's on you, my brother. But it won't. It's... <laughs> Sorry, Nabil. I've got to say, my guy, chill out, my bro. If he, he ends up at Man United, then... Listen, I was talking to a journalist today that was like laughing because he was like, the, the talk today is that it's going to happen. Um, but how can it happen without personal terms having been agreed? But yeah, there we go. Anyway, uh, love this performance, Terry. Someone who needs a shout out tonight besides Jesus and Martinelli is Zinchenko. He was absolute class on the ball. Zinchenko's um, improvement today based on the Palace game was night and day. He was awful against Palace, really. But today, brilliant. Uh, Mish, thank you for becoming um, a member of the Football Terrace. We are going to go to City fans very, very soon. But up first, Brandon's here. What are you saying, Brand? Terry, Terry, Terry. Very happy, bro. Very, very happy. Um, good start to the season for us. And I want to point out something that maybe nobody else has really pointed out. Um, and I know you're not going to believe your ears. Some of the people in the chat are not going to believe it either. But I think Edu... The board and Mikel Arteta have to take huge, huge credit for this because we've seen something at Arsenal that we haven't seen in years. Um, Organisation and preparation is what has won us these uh, first two games, I think. You know, we got our signings in early, um, integrated them in the team. They've had a full pre-season underneath the manager. And don't get me wrong, we still need more signings. You know, I haven't changed my mind on Arteta yet. He's still got a lot to prove. But... He's showing good signs. We're showing good signs. I mean, going forward, mate, we look so, so dangerous. It's unreal. And I was kind of thinking about this earlier. Last season, Bukayo Saka was was probably our best player, I would say, hands down. I mean, would you agree with that? Yeah, probably. Overall, overall yeah, that, without a doubt. And in the past two games, he's been very quiet. He's, he's, not, he's not been the Bukayo Saka that we see of last season, but it hasn't mattered. Because we've got other players now, like Jesus, like Martinelli, uh, that are stepping up, that are scoring the goals, that are, that look we look so dangerous every time we go forward. Like Jess kind of pointed out earlier, it doesn't matter if one or two players, you know, drop maybe like a five out of ten performance. Um, and the only thing that really worries me a little bit is, like I say, we, we conceded two goals today. And they're two goals that could have been avoided, I think. You know, the Saliba one is a little bit unlucky. Um, but the Aaron Ramsdale one, I just think we're, we're looking to go forward so much. And we we um, we push so many players forward that when there is a turnover of possession, almost that long ball just tends to catch us out a little bit. We see it against Palace as well. We see it again today. I think Aaron Ramsdale probably should have done better on the second goal. But that's me being overly, overly critical of the team. But seriously, Terry, like what I can't I can't be any more happier than I am right now. You know, Leicester are a tough team. It, it doesn't matter what anybody says. And I know they're going through a rough time at the moment, you know, especially uh, losing players uh, in defensively. And they've lost Schmeichel as well. But they, they're still a dangerous team and, and can still create chances. And I've just got to give credit to the manager, the board and everybody who's been involved in, in getting these players in quickly and getting them integrated into the team. And you can tell we're a different different proposition altogether. I mean, Gabriel Jesus, I, I questioned it to begin with. I thought, you know, his, his goal scoring record in the Premier League, not that great. He, 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 he would have received more chances in front of goal at Manchester City. But this boy has come in with an absolute point to prove it, it. He's like, we used to praise Lacazette for his work rate. Gabriel Jesus has got Lacazette's work rate, but he's also got the ability. He's also got the the determination, the heart. He's got everything that you want in a, a number nine. And I think he's going to be the signing of the summer this season, hands down, easily. I mean, he very, he very well could be. He very well could be if he keeps performing like that. Brandon... Really appreciate your call, mate, and you coming on and having your say. Top, top man, and we'll speak soon. Still got Gunner Souls to come on the show, but we're going to speak to some City fans as well. First up, uh, man like V's here with us. What are you saying, mate? Big result for you guys today. Give me your thoughts. Yo, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. And I appreciate you calling me V. Terry. Vator, Vader, whatever works for you, my guy. Um, what, what a home game. What a way 
to start off the season and have the crowd enjoy City at home. And what a performance. I, I, was, ex I was excited once I saw that lineup. I saw, okay, we're going to have some, some consistency. We're going we're gonna to continue to work on this, this fluid and learning each other, especially with Holland in the middle. It was it, it couldn't have been I couldn't ask any for anything better other than Foden squaring that pass. That's the only criticism I have of, of today. It was such such a great showing. Gunnigan reminding everyone why he's so nice and kind of telling the rivals and some of those chill, chill, chill. Yes, Silva's important, but we've got a squad. And KDB. Those those whips, those crosses, an, another another game, another assist, another goal. It's going to it's going to be scary, man. My my word is scary for this season, and my word is hunger because the players that have come in are all hungry to continue the success that City's had. I love today's match. No, absolutely. And look, I, I had the City game on as well. It was just comfortable beyond comfortable. The irony is, it, I, I mean, I was just gutted that Haaland didn't score because, in the sense of, I think he's going to break the goal scoring record this year. And I was like, ah, it's a one game where he didn't. But yeah, you guys look great. There, there's goals everywhere. You still look at your fluid best. And you, in recent years, you've started seasons a little slowly. But this year, it's two wins from two. So, again, you might have dips elsewhere because it's a very strange season this year. But yeah. you guys look potent. You look dangerous. And you look like you, 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 you're you there to compete for this I, title. No issues. Hunger and I would, I, would, I would argue. I would argue that it, it, is, it is a little slow in the sense of, we don't we don't quite know where everyone's moving to. You could you could see that Holland himself he's drawing attention from both center backs, and what we don't quite see yet is the wingers running into space and and complementing the attention that he's grabbing. So yeah, we're we're gonna get cooking very very soon. But I love what I'm seeing, man. Four goals today. Um, I humbly said three. It's four. It could have been five or six. Um, man. I'm 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 excited for for next game and the next game is going against it's going against Newcastle so it's going to be an important one. I bet you, I bet you are. Listen, V, thanks for coming on, mate, and having your say. Really appreciate it, bro. Speak again soon. Thank you, thank you, uh, people. Make sure like buttons are being smashed and you're subscribing and all come back. By the way, I want you all here after the Man United game, win, lose or draw. One thing I don't like about the football terrace community is my community. When if Man United win, none of you show up. None of you show up. Show up and support the terrace. Forget about the teams and support the terrace. That's key. Uh, Gunnar Souls is here. What are you saying, Gunnar Souls? Yeah, I'm, re I'm really happy. I'm comfortable. Um, it's the first time in a long time that we can say we're watching games where we're feeling comfortable that we're going to get the win. I think the mentality that I've been talking about, the culture shift that I've been talking about, first thing, all or nothing has been highlighted. But second route to that, we're seeing it in, in this game where we went 2-1. And they bounce back and they reply straight away with a goal. Saliba own goal, you know. All I can say is heads up, you know. And he bounced back from that. He didn't let him face it. Whereas with previous defenders have let that sort of affect their game. And we would have conceded probably more mistakes because of that. But it um, seems like there's a different unity. Like Ramsdale goes straight over to him and says, look, you know, keep your head up. We're still in the game. Let's go again. And that's exactly what happens. I mean, that Gabriel Jesus goal, that was filthy. Like the space he had to pull that off, he needed to be near eye perfect for that to go where it went. And that's the difference. You know, he's hungry, he's threatening. But you know what was even more impressive is the players coming off the bench. Like Enketia looked just as good. I know he didn't get the goals or, you know, he didn't really have a shot or anything. But when you're talking about you know making a sub and making an impact, you need someone to just keep running at them. Imagine you forgot Jesus at for 60, 70 minutes of the game, just running, pressing, just being in your face, and then you've got another man that comes on and does exactly the same. You know, he's definitely improved physically. You know, you've seen it in the in the last moments against Madison where he just shoved him off and the ref gave it as a foul. But in my opinion, that was just more strength, Brady. But the mentality, the the way that we're playing, the composure we're playing with. Where we're playing in phases again, which is what I quite like, where we're slowing the game down when we need to, where we're speeding the game up when we need to. And it's we're in control, you're playing our game, and that's exactly what we need to see. You know, we are the favourites in the majority of these games, and we need to show that. You know, Crystal Palace should have been the home team when we played them, but they look like the away team. Today, you know, we look like the home team, we look like we wanted to dictate tempo. But you know what was more impressive is every time we're favourites in a game, that's when we fumble. 
And today we were the overall favourites. Like everyone yeah. was like, Leicester's got zero chance of winning this game. That's when we normally draw, lose, or have a really crap performance. So we just scrape it. But we shown why we were favourites for the first time in a very long time. And yeah, I hope it continues. It's second game in. And there's so much more to come from this team, which is what excites me. Saka didn't really perform. Odegaard didn't perform. Party didn't have the best of games. You know, Ramsdale looked a bit eh, you know. And Saliba looked solid other than the own goal. So it shows that we've got three to four core players who are still to get to a level. And that's exciting. That's the scary part for me, is if you've got four to five of your starting players still not up to speed, and if they do come to speed, what this team can actually do. Mate, I couldn't I couldn't agree with you more. There's a lot more to come from this Arsenal team. Gunnar Souls, thank you very, very much for coming on and having your say. We'll chat again soon. Thank you, brother. A super chat here it says, usually when um, copying, copying a goal, we fumble uh, into old habits uh, when folding under pressure. But now we are just dangerous and we have more confidence as a unit. Interchanging defenders were baffled. Absolutely spot on there, my friend. Great super chat and comment. Patrick's on now. Man City fan. They smashed it today as well. What are you saying, Patty boy? I'm good, man. Today. Thank you for the invite, as always. Uh, a pleasure. I've been been watching you ever since you were uh, you were doing uh, you you were doing videos in the car. So it's been a long, long, <laughs> long time, my anyway, friend. Anyway, man. Now uh, before I start off, I'd just like to shout out to Roy Jennings, the fraud who has been going against Haaland and things are just not going on for him. Now it's two goals and one assist. Uh, so, hold that. So anyway, look, it, 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 the, the community showed everybody thought we're in the mud and everybody was saying City don't, don't look well. Uh, they, we don't have a left back. We're going to struggle. Funny enough, now things have just gone different. I'm not excited yet, uh, Terry. I'm not going over the top saying we're back. Uh, to be honest with you, the teams we've played, they uh West Ham was good, uh Bournemouth maybe we can say uh was okay, but I'm not still hundred percent excited. The big challenge will be Christopher Harris, because you know we always struggle against them. Uh I'm just waiting to play uh to play a, a big team. Uh that's what I'm waiting for. To just see how we fare against like, what do you uh, mean when you're back? You ain't you ain't been anywhere, you're city, you're the champions, nah, you're always I, there, you're not gonna come I, back, I, you're it. No, no, no. Like, I, like City has to get into a system where they play good. They're playing good right now, but I'm saying we need a bit of a challenge. That's what I'm saying. We need somebody. Like, we need a Spurs. That's what I want to see. That's my season this year. I want to see a Spurs, us against Southampton, and Spurs. <laughs> These three teams, Terry, they make us struggle. So, for me, my excitement is being held back until we meet these three teams that always give us trouble and see how we yeah, do against these, them. These these first world problems that you've got, I can't relate to right now. I, I just want to <laughs> I, I just want to see my team string three or four parties together, and I'll be happy. You I know? know, I know, I know, it, it, I know. But it, it, it's I, one I, of them. I hope, but look, look, City, look, City, look, City, look, City look very good. They've started the season well. There's no doubt about it. But look, I think from an excitement point of view, if I'm being neutral, Arsenal being much better, Chelsea yeah. Spurs being much better makes the league so much better because it does. You know, you, you don't just want like City being amazing and everyone else being okay. You 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 really do need four or five teams that can really perform to a higher level, and we'll see what happens there. But Patrick, always a pleasure speaking, my friend. Uh, thank you very very much indeed. Yeah, uh, thank you, thank you. And viewers, listen, we are back live after the Manchester United game. No doubts about it. Make sure you are here and nowhere else. Smash the like button before you leave. Thank you to my super chatters. Thank you to my members. Thank you to my subscribers. I love you all very, very much. Take care. Goodbye. God bless.